talk about the wonder. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But I just want to give you a few nuggets here. Hallelujah. Um, some Hebrew nuggets, some heavy nuggets, okay? Hallelujah. Why does the Most High say to us that we should do no laborious work on the seventh day or the Shabbat? Don't everybody talk at once. Hallelujah. We get all mixed up here. <laughs> I would say that, number one, we have to follow his pattern. He rested. We're supposed to rest. And on a physical note, we need that. We can't keep going and going and going. Uh, we need to be able to rest. And we need to have set aside time to worship him, to praise him. It, it should be in our everyday life, but we need time to come together as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll accept that. Yes. Anyone else? I agree with that. Following his pattern. That's the that's the precedent that he set from the beginning. And like she said, he knows what we need. So Hallelujah. 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 Now scripture declares to us, so I'll just add a little bit to that. Is it anyone else? Hallelujah. Uh, yes, I got something to say. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You know, also, you know, not just following the pattern, but also, you know, as we work, you know, our work doesn't become vanity to us. That becomes more important than spending that time or taking that day out to worship the Most High, setting that day apart. You hit it right on the head. Hallelujah. He gives us six. Thank you, brother. Uh, he gives us six days for ourselves to uh, whatever we got to do hallelujah to build ourselves up but that seventh day it should all be dedicated to him hallelujah you hit it right the nail on the head thank you so very much we got to begin to think more in the unseen realm the spirit realm you hear me saying a lot about that now hallelujah glory to the most high father we are rock as well hallelujah isn't that right? Created. Asa. In his image. We are imagers of him. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High. Yah. Thank you for that. Just something to kind of stimulate you to thought today as we go forward in the Most High. Yah. Hallelujah. We have to worship him and understand him in rock and in truth. Okay. Can I give you one more nugget? Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, turn up with me, a cotes and ox, hallelujah. And let us, hallelujah, we're going to move quickly here. Let us read, hallelujah, in Ephesians, hallelujah, chapter 6, hallelujah. A cotes, a uh, uh, crystal, uh, read for me there, uh, begin at, at verse 10 of chapter 6. Take your time here. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. Yes. This is coming from the scriptures. Yes. For the rest, my brothers, be strong in the master and in the mightiness of his strength. Put on the complete armor of Elohim for you, for you to have power to stand against the schemes of the devil. Mm -hmm. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against authorities, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual matters of wickedness in the heavens. Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elohim so that you have power to withstand in the wicked day and having done all to stand. Stand then having girded your waist with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having fitted your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace. Above all, having taken up the shield of belief with which you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one. Take also the helmet of deliverance and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Elohim. Stop at 18. Praying at all times with all prayer and supplication in the spirit 
watching in all perseverance and supplication for all the set apart ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, glory to the most high. Yeah. What is happening and what has happened there, hallelujah, in, and I'm not Christian bashing, okay? Hallelujah. But to show you the error, hallelujah, of what we've gone through, many of us were taught in seminary and in churches that spend any time with them that what we have here is, uh, have you ever heard the fact, uh, the teach that this was, of course, written by Shaul, right? Or Paul, right? Of course, they're Paul bashing now as well. And it was said that uh, what he described to you there was the uh, uh, dress of a Roman soldier, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I, I taught that years ago. Hallelujah. The breast, and they would show you pictures of, of Roman soldiers and all this, that, and the other. But that's not the case. Hallelujah. We have to look at scripture with a Hebraic ancient mindset and worldview. Shaul, regardless of what's being taught concerning him, never deviated, hallelujah, from the scripture. What he did was he gave us, hallelujah, the precepts of Torah. Because Shaul, hallelujah, was a very learned man. He was not Peter. He was not Yaakonan. Huh? He was not Jacob or James. These were all shepherds and fishermen. Am I right? Shaul was well trained. Hallelujah. He had, like they say, traditionally likely he had four various degrees. He studied under Gamaliel, huh? Gamaliel. Hallelujah. The great rabbi. Hallelujah. Glory to the most high Yah. So he was very well versed in various languages and he was learned. Hallelujah. But he kept the tenets of scripture because he studied and taught in the same way that Mashiach, uh, that Yah gave us how to understand his word. In the 28th chapter of Isaiah, we know that very well, right? He tells us, precept must be upon what? Precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line measured. He said a little here and a little there, right? So Ephesians, hallelujah, because he was talking to our people. I don't care what they said. These are not Gentiles. They are Hellenistic. Yehudim that think, think like Greeks. Hallelujah. He says, he says, he says, Shaul said, look, he says, my heart's desire for Yasharal is that they be what? Delivered. For I bear them record that they have what? Zeal for Yah but not according to knowledge. Go and go back to establish your own righteousness. They have rejected the righteousness that Yah has provided, which is Mashiach. Hallelujah. So it must be line upon line, precept upon precept. You can't read nothing that Paul writes or show writes that you can't find in Torah. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 59. Keep in mind, hallelujah, Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Glory to the most high Yah. Oh, bless his wonderful name. Now, we heard, and I know we've all probably memorized Ephesians chapter 6, you know, because it talks about spiritual warfare, right? He talked about, hallelujah, fighting a good fight. Is he not elder? Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High Yah. So, if we have Isaiah chapter 59. Read for me a couple of verses. Read for me, uh, Akote. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Start at verse 14. He's talking about the corruption that will come upon Yasharel as a whole. Start at 14. Actually, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. If you know what, in chapter 59, he talks and he talks about when he uses things like uh, 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 the blind, groping, hallelujah, the eyes, you know, uh, they like they blind at noonday. Y'all see that? Actually, start crystal starter uh, at verse 8. Isaiah chapter 59 starting at verse 8. Yes. The way of peace they have not known. Hmm. And there is no right ruling in their ways. They have made crooked paths for themselves. Whoever treads in them shall not know peace. Therefore, right ruling has been far from us and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but there is darkness. 
for brightness, but we walk in thick darkness. We feel for the wall like the blind, and we feel as with our eyes. At noon, we stumble as at twilight. Stop right and there. I'm sorry, read that one verse, stop for a moment, go ahead. At noon, we stumble as at twilight in deserted places like the dead. Hallelujah. He says, we're groping. You can find that Luke, Matthew. It says the people sat in what? Darkness. And it was great darkness. But light has come, which is my shock. Read on. Sorry about that, daughter. Verse 11. Verse 11. All of us growl like bears. Bears. And moan sadly like doves. Mm. We look for right ruling, but there is none. For deliverance, but it is far from us. Stop right there. Mashiach, Yahusha, right? His name means deliverance, salvation. Read. Verse 12, for our transgressions have increased before you and our sins witnessed against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our crookedness, we know them. Transgressing and being untrue to Yahuwah and turning away from our Elohim, speaking oppression and apostasy, conceiving and pondering words of falsehood from the heart. From their hearts, from our hearts. False doctrine, read. Verse 14, and right ruling is driven back and righteousness stands far off. For truth has fallen in the street and right is unable to enter. And the truth is lacking and whoever turns away from evil makes himself a prey. And Yahuwah saw, and it displeased him that there was no right ruling. And he saw that there was no man and was astonished that there was no intercessor. So his own arm saved, so his own arm saved for him. Start right his, there. I'm sorry. Start right there. His own what? His own arm saved for him. Hallelujah. The arm of Yah is Yahusha. Hallelujah. This is the precept here that Shaul is talking about in Ephesians chapter 6. Now, read 17 and 18. You can stop there. Well, the rest of 16 says, and his righteousness upheld him. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Verse 17, and he put on righteousness as a breastplate. As a what? As a breastplate. He read. And a helmet of deliverance on his head. A helmet, hallelujah, read on. And he put on garments of vengeance for clothing mm. and wrapped himself with ardor as a mantle. Verse 18, <laughs> according, mm -hmm. according to their deeds, so he repays wrath to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. He repays recompense to the coastlands. Hallelujah. Stop right there. So what you see here is Shaul in Ephesians not describing a Roman soldier, but takes you back, hallelujah, to Torah. Is that all right? Just a nugget. We have to get in this word. He never goes past that. Hallelujah. Huh? He said, uh, when they accused him in the 21st chapter of Acts, of teaching against Moshe and against Torah. Shaul taught the precepts and took us deeper. And unless you know how to study scripture, which is precept upon precept, line upon line, precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here and a little there, you're all out of order. You get caught up, hallelujah, with error. Hallelujah. We see that same thing that the prophet Yeshayahu or Isaiah declared in Isaiah 59, being re-emphasized and brought to bear in Ephesians. Because Shaul, if you read the scripture, he went in every, as his custom was, everywhere he went, he went to the synagogue. You think Gentiles had a synagogue? No. Take your time and study the scripture. That's our nugget for today. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High Yah. I pray that it stimulates you. All right. Hallelujah. Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And Yahusha are a card.
for the teaching are out there even today that Yahushua is not divine. We don't, they don't understand. Yahukanon 1-1 one, one, where it tells us that in the beginning was, hallelujah, Yahuwah. That's what it says. Now, I don't know if any of you, I, I've admonished you to get you restored, hallelujah, scriptures, hallelujah, true name, hallelujah, glory to the most high. One of the most dynamic translations, hallelujah, because it takes you back, not only in the names, but it shows you the connection of them being one. Hallelujah. All righty. So we, we, we all know the Shema or the Shema, right? We call it. And it says, Heal Yasharal, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Or it says, Shema Yasharal, Yahuwah Nu Aloheinu Yahuwah Echad, right? So we want to talk today about the oneness. Woo, glory. I'm not talking about some uh, apostolic teaching, though they kind of had a grip on it, but they didn't know it for sure. Hallelujah. Because they said the law was done away with. Hallelujah. Okay, now when we read the Shema, because of our understanding of the rule and concept of one, Mishpachah, and we can say anything to you today is this. You, we must have an ancient mindset. The ancient mindset believed in Yah, or they believed in there were other gods. Yeah. Mashach taught, did he not? Yah himself declared, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So if there were none, he would not have said that. But he's the all-powerful one. I am one. I am the God. I am him. Hallelujah. I am Al Elyon, the mighty one. There are others. Because now you got all these other people, these Goyim, when you talk about Yasharal, that worship other gods. They pray to him. Ra and different ones. You see? Hallelujah. Molech. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. So we have to change. Our mindset has to be, our worldview cannot be Christian or Roman Catholic or Greek. Hallelujah. So when we think of one, you know how we think with this Western mindset. We often struggle with the understanding of Yahuwah being a card or one. Well, who did, one of the craziest questions we asked, and I did that many years ago myself. Well, who, who was he praying for? Who was he praying to when he was on the on, on the stake? <laughs> How could that be? You know, that westernized mindset. Our direct interpretation of this verse gives the impression that Yahuwah only exists in one form. That's not scripture. You have to know the scriptures. If he's Yah, why can't he exist in other forms? We're going to go into this even later. Hallelujah. In the coming weeks and months. Hallelujah. So we take the Shema, Shema or the Shema, or whatever you want to pronounce it. Uh, the, we think of one to be in one. And it is one. But the Most High can manifest himself that wonders in many ways. And it's throughout scripture. Hallelujah. Glory. All right. So we think he's only this in one form. He is one. There could be no other form. Otherwise, that would apply to Elohim. Now we're thinking about what? Polytheism. You see. One God. One, one. Manifest in three persons. Now see the Catholic Church do that in their persons. Hallelujah. Even bring them down to the to the human form. Can y'all manifest as a human being? Yeah. Hallelujah. We are even one. Shaul gives us a glimpse of that when he tells us, be careful how we entertain strangers. For we could be entertaining Malik or angels or messengers, not just messengers, but Yah himself. Abraham, hallelujah, entertained these things. No. Abraham saw him. Hallelujah. But he saw it was three of them came. And one stood up and said, look, I'm going to tell him, I ain't going to hide it from my servant. I'm going to tell him what I'm going to do. Yah himself in human form. Oh, bless his wonderful name. 
we all seem to accept the fact that the Ruach HaKadosh has been a part of Yah, don't we? Yeah, got to have the Ruach HaKadosh. But the concept of a physical manifestation of Yahuwah often is questioned. Where does the debate lie? It was mostly fueled by the Jewish message of unbelief and Greek polytheism, or the belief in multiple gods. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. However, what is not extensively researched, yes, and discussed is the fact that the Tanakh, that's the first five books, we just simply say Torah, Torah is the laws and instructions, but it's all incorporated in the Tanakh. Hallelujah. Which is, consist of, as you see the capital T in K, consist of Torah instructions, the N stand for Navi or the prophets, hallelujah, and the K for the letters. It's the same way that, that what we call the New Testament is written that same, hallelujah, uh, 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 template. Follows the same template. Hallelujah. Before the birth of Yahusha, we see multiple manifestations of Yahuwah in different forms. Hallelujah. Glory. The Jewish faith had for a long time the concept, did you know this, of two powers in the Shemaim. Yeah. You got to study. Boy, there's so much out here, I tell you, Mishmachah. There is so much. But we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And we reject knowledge. We won't put in the time. We won't put in the work. What's why it's put in the work for us? Hallelujah. Glory. This Jewish theological view was declared heretical around the second century of the Common Era. If you don't believe me, look it up. Let's Google two powers of Judaism. It'll take you all kinds of places. Hallelujah. Glory. Now, physical, let's address a few physical manifestations of Yahuwah in the Tanakh. Scripturally, Yahuwah appears in various forms in our Tanakh. He appears as the Malik or angel of Yahuwah. And we're really going to get into that. If you, if you go to Judges and Joshua, boy, you see a whole lot of things. You see him. Hallelujah. Before they were going to go over, I'll get a little ahead of myself, but before they went, he went over to fight in Jericho, we know about that, right? Hello. Glory to the Most High. Joshua met an angel, supposedly the angel of the Lord, with his sword drawn. That was Yah. Hallelujah. Read it. Glory to the Most High Yah. So we also find him as the Dabar, or the word of Yahuwah. In the beginning was the word, and the, was with God. the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. I'm talking about King James now, right? Hallelujah. He's also known as the commander of the Sabah, or the, hallelujah, Sabarut, where we get our word Sabarut, the host, the army of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. He's also called the name of Yahuwah. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High. As we study these verses, please let us take a careful note of the merging of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And I have the modern Hebraic term there as well. And these reveal forms. Also, we must note that we will find both the first, here we go, language and third person narrative throughout scripture. Yeah. Use the first, second, two, and third person narrative. That's why we must take our time to study the word. This is implying that the manifestation of Yahuwah are one. That's what it lets you know. That makes any sense of a quote to crystal? Hallelujah. Malik, or angel of Yahuwah. Throughout the Tanakh, we find the references, what? The angel of Yahuwah, or King James says, the angel of the Lord. That'll throw you off. In the restored scriptures, it's connected. It also means the presence, his, in his presence. Hallelujah. Every angel of Malik is not a messenger. Woohoo! There are messengers in the book of Job, or Job, where it said, and the sons of God clap their hands. They're not messengers. They're not Gabriel or Michael. 
These are other Elohims who we read about in what? Last week. Turn to Psalms 82, Crystal. Read the first verse, please. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm chapter 82, verse 1. Elohim stands in the congregation of El. He judges in the midst of the Elohim. Hallelujah. Let's not talk about messages. These are the same ones, hallelujah, basically, who clapped their hands as he spoke to Job or Job and Job 38. You remember he asked Job, where were you when the sons clapped their hands? So they were there at creation. Hallelujah. Glory to the most high Yah. And so Psalms 82, which we read right over, says, Yah stands where or sits where? Uh, according to her, uh, Crystal? In the congregation of El. Mm. And what else? He judges in the midst of the Elohim. Hallelujah. Other gods. Huh? Whom he put over his territories. Read the scriptures. But it was not him. He's the one that judged. And he was accusing them of doing the wrong thing in the earth. And you find that he said they were doing the wrong thing toward his created human beings. So he was judging them. But he was in the midst of them. Hallelujah. You remember in 2 Kings chapter 20, no, 1 Kings chapter 22, where there was a meeting going on because he's going to bring judgment on, on, upon Ahab. And he asked, Hallelujah, who shall go and deceive Ahab for me? And he said, one of, the, one of them stood up, one of the spirits stood up and said, I'll go. He said, well, How are you going to do it? He said, I'll put a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. Y'all remember that? I preached 25 years ago. Uh, uh, what? Lying spirits sent by God. <laughs> you remember that? Uh, uh, uh Iman, y'all? Didn't love. Mm. Y'all was giving me revelation there. I just didn't know how to uh, discern it. But it sounded good. <laughs> you know, preachers want to sound good. You get people all excited. Hallelujah. But throughout this Tanakh, you'll find this, this the, the word, and the angel of Yahuwah. And we find him speaking in the first person as if he were Yahuwah, the angel. I'll do this. I'll do that. Hallelujah. The first reference found in Bereshit, um, I'm sorry, yeah, Bereshit, Genesis. Remember Hagar? Yeah. Who Abraham went into? Under the coaching or, or insistence of uh, Sarah? She was fleeing from a mistress Sarah. And the angel, according to King James, of Yahuwah speaks to her. Hallelujah. Here it is. Bereshit 16, 7 through 10, it says, And my life, angel of the Lord, they're connected. It says Yahuwah in the restored. Found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain of Derek, or the way. That's the Hebraic word for way. Derek. Make a note of it. To sure. And he said, Hey God, Sarah's maid, where did you come from? And where will you go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarah and Malik. Hallelujah. Yahuwah. That's why I connected it. Angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself unto her hands. And the Malik, Yahuwah, angel of the Lord, said unto her, What? I will multiply. You see, your zera, exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Sounds like what was said to Abraham when you told him, look into the heavens, to the Shemaim on the earth. Is that right? But he said, I, first person. Hello. Glory to the Most High Yah. Hmm? Notice that the Mali or the angel of Yahuwah, or Yahuwah, said that he will greatly multiply her ascendants, her descendants. Angels can't do that. Other gods can't do that. Only Yah himself can create. Or just take some deductive reasoning and some discernment. If it were a mere angel of Yahuwah, how can he also, how can he do that? 
He can't. Remember? Here, O Yasharel, he's one. He's the only one that gives life. He proceeds by telling her that she was pregnant. Okay, I can see that. And gave her a prophecy regarding her unborn son. Hallelujah. Look at what it says, 311 through 13, he says, And the Mali Yahuwah, the angel of the Yah, because it's capitalized, said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Ishmael. I'm sorry, Ishmael, or what we call, right? Ishmael in English. Because the Lord, right there is Yahuwah, hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man. He's discussing how this, and that's what we have all going in what they call the Middle East now. This prophecy is coming to pass. It's been coming to pass over there. All the war and fighting and this and that and factions. Because he would be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. And she called the Mali Yahuwah, hallelujah, the angel of the Lord. She called him Yahuwah in the original. Hello? that spoke to her. She called him, you are El Royi. What does that mean? The Elohim, the God who sees me. Now why would she ascribe that title to him? Hmm? Not only that, she says, you see me, for she said, I have even been looked, I have looked upon him that sees me. Everybody knows the description, you can't see Yah, and live. Am I right? He himself said that. Hallelujah. So I'll hide you at the cliff, he told Moshe. But they've seen, we've seen him in various forms. And I realized it was him. Hallelujah. In this passage, Mishpachah, we see Yahuwah appearing as, a mole, as an angel of Yahuwah. Speaking both in the first and third person. And Hagar declaring that she has seen Yah. We just read that. And yet lives. Because they knew. Yasharel believed and understood that no one could see him. Look upon his face and live. Hallelujah. Glory. Because Moshe had passed down some things to them as well. Hagar also calls on the name of Yahuwah, who then proceeds to speak to her. Y'all with me? Blessed be the name. We talk about the oneness of Yah. Hallelujah. Okay, another witness. Abraham. You may not be very, a whole lot of us might not be so familiar with Hagar or Hagar, but we are with Abraham or Abraham. Abraham was about to slay his son, Yitzhak, or Isaac. Remember? When the Mole Yahuwah, the angel of your, the Lord, spoke to him. And look at what he says. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the Malik, or the angel of Yahuwah, or Yahuwah, called unto him out of the Sham, out of where? Out of the Shamaim, of Shamaim, hallelujah, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, hallelujah, lay not thine hands upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know, first person, that you fear, you reverence, you esteem Yahuwah, me. Right? See that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from who? From me. You see first person, second person, you see me, you see it. Do you see it? Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High Yah. For me. Who is he going to sacrifice to? Who gave him the command to go do that? Glory to his name. Hallelujah. And look at what it says. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering. Now sacrifice. In the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Yahweh Yaira. 
We used to say in the church, Jer uh, Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> That's what it means Yah will provide. So he's talking to Yah. Ha, ah, glory. But King James says the angel, and we get mixed up. As it is said to this day, that mount, the mountain of Yahuwah shall be seen. And the mighty angel of Yahuwah called unto Abraham out of the Shabbat, the heavens, the second time, and talked to him. Hallelujah. Oh, this is exciting. Look. Look what he says. He says, and he said, by, 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 by who? Myself have I sworn, said, King James says, the angel of the Lord is Yah, glory to the Most High. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing who I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed, what? My voice. The way the other nations are blessed. Yah, Yah has one son. Technically two. One is Yahuda, and one, it was both in one, and one is Ephraim, or Israel. Hallelujah. Everybody else, he didn't come for them. But the only way they come, they get blessed because his prophecy will be fulfilled that they will all be blessed as they join to us to worship the one true and living Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we get thrown off when we hear about Goyim. Oh, we, are, we were Gentiles. No, 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 no. No. The prodigal son, as I was jokingly, <laughs> hallelujah, but a little serious too, when I said, talked about uh, uh, Akmatidis earlier, hallelujah, the prodigal son, we thought that was us. We was taught that. No, no, that's the northern kingdom who left the father. You with it, Elder? That's the northern kingdom. That's that son who went off into another land. And ate with the pigs, disappeared completely. And so Ezekiel comes and prophesies that, and the two sticks shall be one. Prophetically, he told, hallelujah, uh, 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 him to take one stick and write both names on it. Because that's what's going to bring everything right back together. And the whole creation is going to be blessed through us. That's why even now, unbeknownst to us, we affect everything, cultures, everything. My, my. Glory. He obeyed his voice. We're almost through here. Only a few more. First, the angel of Yah told Abraham not to offer his son. In effect, canceling Yah's instruction. Did he have the power to do that? No. Only Yah has that power. Secondly, he spoke to Abraham in the first person as if he is Yahuwah. He said to him, you do not withhold your son from me. And by myself, I have sworn, declares Yahuwah, and I will greatly bless you. From this we can see that it could, have only, could not have been just a regular angel, as we understand it, but Yah himself. Yet in the text, the conversation is initiated by the angel of the Lord speaking. Or by Yah. It was initiated by Yah himself. The author made no transition. Listen, you have to understand the writers, the ancient writers' mindset and what they believed. Not with Aristotle, Socrates, hmm? Roman Catholicism, rabbinical Talmudism, or that. You see, hallelujah. So the writer did not make a transition, a transition from one speaker to another, but treats Yahuwah and the angel of the Lord as interchangeable, as one. Because it is Yah himself speaking. Hallelujah. 
glory. One more witness. Let every word be established between at least two or three witnesses. Is that right? That's Yah's law. Yaakov, or Jacob, we call him. Just like in, say, for instance, in the Britain Hadashah, what we call it, they call the New Testament, the book of James, is actually Yaakov. Hallelujah. Here we find that when Yaakov or Jacob blessed Ephraim, mm, and Manasseh, the sons of Yosef, he prayed the following blessing over them. And this is what he says in Bereshit 48, 15 through 16, he says, And he baruch, or blessed Yosef, and said, Elohim, before whom my avot, our fathers, Abraham, Yisak, did have their halakha, their walk, they walked before him. The Elohim, who fed me, what? All my kayim, all my life. Long to this, all, all my life. Okay, you all see what they say? All my life, my whole life. Even up to this yom or this day. The what? My leg. The angel. Now you see the, the progression here? Spoke to the fathers. Fed them. Am I right? And he called him the angel that my lot, Yah himself, who redeemed me. Can the angel redeem you? No, sir. From all rach or evil, ra'a, glory. Bless the lads and let my name, Yasharal, be named on them. And the name of my avut, our fathers, Abraham and Yisak, and let them grow. Hallelujah. The yadugo lavrov. That means to grow continuously into a multitude like fish. Hallelujah. In the midst of the earth. Glory, 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 glory. One. Heal Yasharel. Our L is one. Hallelujah. In his book, The Unseen Realm, Mike Heiser picks up another interesting merging of the Yahuwah and the angel of law in this passage. Now look at this. The parallel position of, that should be of, excuse me, Elohim, or who they call God, who we know, hallelujah, is Yah, and the Malak, or angel, is unmistakable. Since the scriptures very clearly teach that Yahuwah is what? Eternal, and exists before all things, visible, hoo-hoo, and invisible. And that angels are also, we know that, created beings. The point of this define, def, I'm sorry, definite parallel is not to say that Elohim is an angel. On the other hand, it affirms that the angel is Yahuwah. The scripture that we read, it showed you through that blessing who the angel was. Can you see that? I pray you can. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High. Is that it? I don't think so. Hallelujah. But does that make sense? Better sheet there. As we read it, it simply tells us who it really is. He's eternal. Angels are created beings. He's not talking about other Elohim here. He's not talking about other gods here. But guess what? They were created too. And they had dominion over things. That's why they're so upset with man that Yah would give man now possession. You remember the, the Mali? Those, uh, what, they were upset with the Most High. I think, is it in the 8th chapter of Psalms where it says, What is man that you're mindful of him? They was upset. Or, or the Son of Man that you visited him. You gave him uh, uh, dominion over all your handiwork. He hadn't done anything, you know, uh, but failed you. What made man so special? They hate us. Hallelujah. So you can see what he was talking about. Now, the most striking feature is the verb, may he bless. Hallelujah. Uh, may he bless. 
Huh? See? Hallelujah. The Yah has blessed us. You see? As the same way that he had blessed, he prayed the prayer that the children of Yaakov, I mean that Joseph, will be blessed. And so he makes it, may he bless. Now, hallelujah, can an angel bless you? Does he have the power to proclaim a blessing upon you unless Yah has given it to him? In Ivory, the verb bless, look here. In this passage, what we just read, hallelujah, in Genesis, it's not grammatically plural to mean two, or two different entities. Hello. Because if that were the case, it would indicate two different personalities or persons are being asked to bless the boys. Rather, it is singular. Whew. Wow. We have to take our time, Mitch Bakar. I don't expect everybody to be a more more whatever, teach all that. But we got to be able to understand and have the mindset, an ancient mindset. Hallelujah. It is in the singular and not the plural. So that would imply two different entities that, hallelujah, Abraham is doing. He's blessing. Hallelujah. And he's asking two different entities to bless. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thereby connecting in tight fusion, you know what fusion means, the two divine beings on the part of the author. Wow. If it were that. In other words, the author had the opportunity to distinguish the Elohim of Yasharel from the angel, but instead, the identities are merged as one. You with me, Ima? Hallelujah. Glory to his wonderful name. I thank him and I praise him. Hallelujah. We need a, a, a greater understanding of our Elohim, of Yah. And he has given us everything, but because we reject his knowledge and without the true Ruach HaKodesh, Everybody talk about they got Ruach, Ruach, Ruach. There's always he in, in the awakening. Ruach, Ruach, Ruach. Yeah, everybody has Ruach. Scripture teaches that. We taught that when we talked about the tripartiteness of man. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High Yah. Shema, Yashrael. Yahuwah Aloheinu, Yahuwah Akkad. He, O Israel, Ayah, is one. And so, Father, we thank you today once again for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness, which is greater than life. We thank you for the prayers that have gone forward before you this day from the Mishpachah here and the Mishpachah scattered to the four corners. We truly have failed you, Father. But you declared, Father, that you would cast us out, that you would send us into places, into captivities, that we would forget the very remembrance of you. Hallelujah. And even today, Father, in this awakening, many of us have a form of righteousness, godliness, but deny the very power thereof that's revealed through Yahushua HaMashiach, your Daba, your word that took on flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld your glory as the only begotten, hallelujah, your God of the Most High Yah. But you have asked us, you commanded us to blow the shofar Hallelujah in Zion. Hallelujah. Sound the alarm in your holy temple. Thank you, Father, that you are one and true. Hallelujah. There is none like thee, Father. And we praise and honor your name today. Continue to strengthen these, your people. Give unto us, Father, the Ruach, your Ruach of wisdom and revelation. Huh? Glory. And the knowledge, Mashiach. It is my prayer that the eyes, our hearts, our lead, our ayin, our eyes will be open. Ha! Ah, that we might understand your word. Hallelujah. That we be enlightened. That we might know the hope of the call that you placed upon us. And what exceeding riches we have and the glory and the esteem of the Kodashim, the saints, the set apart ones. Hallelujah. That we might seek your face and seek it while it be found, Father. 
you declare it, Father. Great is the mystery of your being. Ooh, glory. You will manifest in the flesh. Seen of the Malik. Preached on in the Eretz or the Alam in the world. Received up in the glory. Thank you, Most High Yah, for your Kaim, your grace, and your Rakim, your mercies, your compassion unto us. And Yahushua's mighty and awesome name, we pray. And it's done because you have declared it so. For your word shall not leave your mouth and return unto you void, but it shall accomplish all that you send it out to do. Hallelujah. We declare that it's done because you have declared it. We just concur with your word. For you declared, Father, whether we bind on earth shall be bound in the Shamaim, whether we be loosed in the errands shall be loosed in the Shamaim. And it is so, and it is done. And we say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High.